Welcome back to our Labor Day weekend conversation with the president of the Massachusetts AFL-CIO, Steve Tolman. So, Steve, before the break, you are talking about how we need more tax revenue. We've got to be careful about corporate welfare, giving it away in, in order to try to attract jobs. Uh, and referring back to that UMass study we were talking about, the, uh, no secret, the biggest growth in the labor movement around here, at least, has been in public sector unions. And without government revenues, public sector unions struggle to get better wages and deals for their employees. So I guess my question to you is, is the labor movement here in Massachusetts today synonymous with pressure for higher taxes? Well, I would frankly say that we should have a better tax package. I mean, we, we have the millionaire's tax on the ballot next year, John. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, uh, that would give $2 billion and it would go right to education and highways. And the reason that coalition of labor unions and community groups and faith groups came together is there's no investment. We're not investing in our roads and bridges. And that the legislature doesn't see fit to, you know, tackle this tax issue. We're 45th in the nation in investing in roads and bridges, 45th in the nation in investing in our public education system. We were number one, but we're falling from number one in those positions, John. We need to have tax revenue to invest in the future so Massachusetts stays a great state. Well, that's a political problem, though, for you, isn't it? Because you've also got a sales tax cut on the ballot, along oh. with the millionaire's tax. That could wipe out a lot of those revenue gains. You've got the Trump administration and Republicans in Congress promoting a tax package now that potentially could have a, a huge impact on Massachusetts. So, uh, you know, but, but we're we, from here. But we're from here. We have to be organized. We have to make sure our members are focused and educated. And most importantly, John, we have to understand that the nurses' problem is our problem, that the public employees' problem is our problem, and that the building trades, so that we all understand we're in it together, and we have to stand by each other. I looked it up. 42% of union households, members of union households in the country, voted for Trump last fall. And we all remember the strong uh, union worker support that Scott Brown had in his Senate race a few years back. What's your message to members of your rank and file who are pro-Brown, pro-Trump, willing to vote for these conservative Republicans? Well, well, John, my message simply is sort out the BS. Sort out the BS because President Trump, when he was candidate Trump, played on the hearts of those unemployed and those struggling, and he misled them by saying he cared about changing trade agreements. Now we see NAFTA's falling apart, his, his ability to change NAFTA. So he told them what he wanted to hear, said he was going to help, and the Democrats frankly said the same thing and hadn't delivered in the last 30 or 40 years, John. And so that they were told that they were going to get help by this guy. Now we're seeing nothing but unfulfilled promises. And that I think our members can sort out so that we have to get down to the nitty gritty. We have to basically get back to basics and say, if they're legit, then we support them. If they're going to support us, we'll support them. But if they're not, we're not going to support them. Steve, thanks for coming by. I, I wish we had more time. Out. Thanks, John. And my, I hope everybody has a great Labor Day because that's what this is all about, celebrating the work of working people. Appreciate that. Thank you. Steve Thank you. Tolman, president of the Mass AFL-CIO. That's our time for this morning. Right now, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.